This is the way we determine the gender of those adorable aquatic salamanders known as axolotls. Hello, I'm Shafik, and I'm on a mission to uncover all the secrets that our slimy guild friends have been keeping from us. And one of those secrets pertains to axolotl gender, or as I like to call it, the great salamander guessing game. Now, as someone who spent more hours than I'd like to admit peering into aquariums and squinting at tiny amphibian anatomy, I think I'm qualified to talk about this. So, let's dive into the murky waters of axolotl gender identification and see if we can't clear things up a bit. You know, when I first started keeping axolotls, the one thing that always puzzled me was how to tell if I had a bob or a betty swimming around in my tank. I mean... Have you ever tried to ask an axolotl his preferred pronouns? Trust me, you'll get nothing but a blank stare or maybe a few air bubbles. Now imagine trying to set up an axolotl dating service without knowing who's who. Not a pretty picture, folks. So I'd like to talk about these fascinating creatures and their subtle gender differences. They're like the secret agents of the amphibian world, keeping their identities close to their gills. How do they do it? Well, axolotls are masters of disguise, with males and females looking almost identical to the untrained eye. But fear not, for I shall reveal their secrets. Today I'm going to compare male and female axolotls, because as it turns out, not all axolotls are created equal. It's like comparing a pink flamingo pool float to a blue whale pool float. They both float, but they're different in some key ways. I'm going to show you something. Look at this. You might think male and female axolotls look the same. They both swim. They both regenerate limbs, show-offs. They both have those adorable frilly gills, but their approach to being boy axolotls and girl axolotls is quite different. How? Well, let's start with size. Female axolotls tend to be larger than males. Think of it like this, if axolotls were in a boy band, the females would be the tall, mysterious ones in the back, while the males would be the cute, compact ones up front. Next, let's talk about body shape. Females typically have a rounder, fuller body compared to males. It's like they're constantly preparing for an underwater axolotl fashion show, always ready to strut their stuff on the aquarium catwalk. Males, on the other hand, tend to be slimmer and more streamlined. They're the Olympic swimmers of the axolotl world, built for speed and agility. But why the difference? Well, it comes down to good old-fashioned biology and the miracle of axolotl babies. Female axolotls need that extra space to carry eggs. It's like they're always packing for a long trip. Even if that trip is just from one end of the tank to the other, males not needing to carry eggs can afford to be a bit more svelte. Now, let's get into the nitty-gritty of axolotl anatomy. Don't worry, I'll keep the jargon to a minimum. I promise not to throw around words like cloaca more than absolutely necessary. Oh wait, I just did. Well, since it's out there, let's learn more. The cloaca is a key feature in determining axolotl gender. In males, the cloaca is more swollen and pronounced. It's like they're trying to make a statement. Hey, look at me, I'm a boy axolotl. Females, being more subtle, have a less noticeable cloaca. It's their way of keeping things classy and understated. But the real giveaway, the holy grail of axolotl gender identification, is the presence of a small bump behind the cloaca in males. This bump is actually, well, let's just call it the axolotl equivalent of a certain male anatomical feature. It's like nature's way of putting a tiny M for male on the axolotl. Females lacking this bump remain smooth in that area, maintaining their air of mystery. Now, you might be thinking, Sarah, this all sounds great, but how am I supposed to see these differences when my axolotl is darting around the tank like it's training for the amphibian Olympics? Well, my friend, that's where patience and a keen eye come in handy. It's like being a detective, but instead of solving crimes, you're solving the mystery of axolotl gender. One trick I've learned is to observe your axolotl during feeding time. They tend to be more still when they're munching on their favorite snacks. It's like trying to determine someone's gender at a buffet. They're too focused on the food to notice you staring. Just don't get too close, or you might end up with an axolotl thinking your finger is dessert. Another method is to look at the axolotl from above. The difference in body shape is often more noticeable from this angle. Females will appear wider, especially in the middle, while males maintain a more uniform width. It's like looking at the difference between a submarine and a blimp, both are impressive, but one is definitely more rotund. 
But here's the kicker. These methods aren't foolproof. Young axolotls can be particularly tricky to sex as their characteristics aren't fully developed. It's like trying to guess if a human baby will grow up to be a basketball player or a jockey. You might have some clues, but you can't be certain until they're older. So what's an axolotl enthusiast to do? Well, patience is key. As your axolotls mature, their gender characteristics will become more pronounced. It's like watching a mystery unfold. Only instead of who done it, it's who's a dude or not. Now, let's talk about some of the misconceptions about axolotl gender identification. One common myth is that you can tell an axolotl's gender by its color. I hate to burst your bubble, but their pink axolotl isn't necessarily a girl, and that black one isn't automatically a boy. Axolotls come in a rainbow of colors, and they don't discriminate based on gender. It's like assuming all pink toys are for girls and blue toys are for boys. It's just not accurate. Another misconception is that aggressive behavior indicates a male axolotl. While males can be territorial, especially during breeding season, females can also show aggressive tendencies. It's like assuming all loud, boisterous people are men and all quiet, reserved people are women. We know that's not true in humans and it's not true in axolotls either. Speaking of breeding, that's when the gender differences really come into play. When axolotls are ready to mate, the males will deposit small cone-shaped spermatophores in the tank. It's like they're leaving little love notes around the aquarium. The females then pick up these spermatophores to fertilize their eggs. It's a romantic dance, axolotl style. Female axolotls will lay eggs, usually attaching them to plants or decorations in a tank. It's like they're decorating for an underwater baby shower. Males, on the other hand, will often be seen doing a little wiggle dance to attract females. It's the axolotl equivalent of showing off your best moves on the dance floor. But here's a word of caution. If you're not prepared to deal with hundreds of baby axolotls, it's best to keep males and females separate. Trust me, axolotls are prolific breeders. And before you know it, you could be running an accidental axolotl daycare. Now you might be wondering, Sarah, why does all this matter? Can't we just let axolotls be axolotls without worrying about their gender? Well, my curious friend, knowing the gender of your axolotls can be important for several reasons. Firstly, if you're planning to breed axolotls, and remember, they're endangered in the wild, so responsible breeding can help conservation efforts. You'll need to know which ones are male and which are female. It's like trying to set up your single friends. You need to know who's who to make the right matches. Secondly, knowing the gender can help you understand and predict certain behaviors. For example, if you notice your female axolotl looking particularly plump, it might be because she's carrying eggs. It's like noticing your human friend has a sudden craving for pickles and ice cream. It could mean something's up. Lastly, it's just plain interesting. Understanding the subtle differences between male and female axolotls can deepen your appreciation for these fascinating creatures. It's like learning a new language. Suddenly, you're seeing things you never noticed before. So there you have it, a crash course in axolotl gender identification. Remember, it takes practice and patience to become an expert. Don't get discouraged if you can't tell right away. Even experienced axolotl keepers sometimes get it wrong. It's like trying to guess someone's age. Sometimes you're spot on and sometimes you're way off. In the end, whether your axolotl is a male or a female, one thing is certain, they're all equally adorable and fascinating. These little aquatic salamanders with their ability to regenerate limbs and their perpetually smiling faces are truly one of nature's wonders. Male or female, they're all worthy of our love and care. Well, that's it for this video. Let me know in the comments below what you think about these slimy little gender benders. Have you had success in determining your axolotl's gender? Or maybe you have a funny story about getting it completely wrong. Don't worry, we've all been there. If you enjoyed this deep dive into the world of axolotl anatomy, be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any amphibian adventures. Big thanks to my patrons for literally making this video happen. If you'd like to support the channel and help me keep exploring the slimy edges of axolotl science, you know what to do. Until next time, keep your eyes peeled and your magnifying glasses ready. And remember, in the world of axolotls, things aren't always as they seem. Goodbye.